Well, in my recent videos, I made much mention of the Complete Strategist 2014 Store Championships that took place on Saturday, February 15th, 2014. And they happened. So, let's watch round four. It was a five-round tournament. I don't have enough camera batteries to record five rounds of games. And I only have one camera, so we can only watch one game out of the many games played in round four. Uh, this is the game between two players who I think were pretty... It's pretty much the top table, right? I don't know if they were both undefeated coming into this round. Maybe one loss at most coming in. Um, but yeah, whoever... You know, one of them is going to take the lead going into the fifth and final round. On the left, Fedor. On the right, Chris. You've seen Chris in videos, but I think you've seen both these guys in videos before. Um, Fedor won the regionals uh, in the same store many moons ago. Uh, Chris has won many a tournament. You've seen him play against me. You've seen him, uh, you know, during the live stream. With his uh, ring, his dice ring. He loves spinning that thing. All right. Well, Andromeda, pretty typical Andromeda, pretty typical NBN. These are like the top decks these days, right? So what happens when two great players who are both really good at the game take the most popular factions in their you know, most popular archetypes and square them off against each other. This will be interesting to see. You're also going to, if you keep watching, see game two of this match. Whole match, one video. How about that? It's going to be hard to tell how many credits Fedor has at any given time because he uses a D20 uh, for his credits. Uh, Chris is using the futuristic coins uh, from Kickstarter that I also have, and so do some other runners for his credits. So it's easy to see, uh, if you know what the colors are at least. Those silver ones he just dropped are twos. Those coppery ones are ones. He also is using these uh, penny gems, which are stickers that you apply to American pennies. Um, and you see he's got two of them on his MBN card for his recurring trace credits. And if he spends them, he'll just move them off the card and then back onto it again. Typical opening, Ice Ice Hedge Fund, Sure Gamble, Data Sucker, Dirty Laundry Archives, and one more click coming from the runner. It's going to be something. It's going to be interesting. Hmm. Thinking about it. Uh, the penny gems I think he got from Etsy. Oh, he's making a run in HQ. There is a Caduceus there. The first trace for the money is five. Boost that trace for the money. Who cares if they get in? Get the data sucker. You, you want that money back. Free res. Free res and a strong ice. Caduceus is awesome. Yep. I think he prevented him from... Oh, no, he let him get the money, I think. Yeah, he let him get the money. He got in, he got his data sucker, and he discarded a... Is that Katie Jones he discarded? He must have another one. All right, the corp going with an install and two-credit take. as a new remote in the scene. During this tournament, some guy um, installed an Astro Skip naked on me. <laughs> he wouldn't even protect it. And I didn't run it because I'm a dummy, uh, but because he showed mid-seasons and he had a lot more money than me at that time. So what was I going to do? Special Order is the Mimic. He wants to run through that HQ right away. Maybe he'll just, well, he had Special Order install. So if he account siphons right now... He's probably not going to uh, be able to remove those tags, which can be dangerous against MBN. Oh, he ran the remote. Where the Sansan is living. Can't trash it. Otherwise, he would have. 
Kucha. Draw. And turns over. Mandatory draw by the corp. He can afford to use that Sansan. -san. And he does. He bounces out a something. Aguila hands. Awesome. I know this deck only has one Gila hands in it. Some people say Gila hands. The Chayal hands. Whatever you want to call it. Awesome agenda. Really powerful if you get it early. Here comes the account siphon. He's going to be able to use the siphon money to trash the sand sand. Oh, he's letting him get the three credits on the... Um, oh, no. I don't think so. He's just, he just siphoning him. Okay. Oh, I see. He let him get the three credits on the Caduceus uh, so that he would have enough to get siphoned, right? Because he spent all that money rezzing the sand sand and, and scoring the, the agenda that there wasn't enough money left for siphoning. So, but the Caduceus, that's very clever, by only breaking the second subroutine, even if the, the corp doesn't boost the trace, it's like they have to take the three credits, which you then siphon away. So, wow, that's that's really clever trick there. I've never, I've never thought of that, only breaking the second subroutine because you want them to get the money so you can siphon it. Mm, so what did the corp do? He used his heal of hands to get some uh, get some money, and he took another money. All right, so he's loading up on money to get siphoned again. Uh, the runner appears to have cleared the tags. I think he siphoned, killed the sand sand, and removed the tags. Runs R and D pop up window, pays, gets data sucker, scores, breaking news. Corp would like to have that. Those data suckers are piling up. He's porous ice. Okay. Corp's got a lot of money, though. He's got to find a way to turn this... Uh, you know, with the healer hands keeps giving the money. he got to find a way to turn that money into winning. Mm, icing up R&D a little bit harder to keep him out. Okay. Oh, look at that RSVP pop-up window. If you can't break the RSVP, you cannot pay the pop-up window. And so he jacks out before encountering the pop-up window so that the corp does not gain a credit uh, for nothing. That Katie Jones is filling up. I guess he yeah, he must have thrown out that other one because he had that one. I send up HQ a little more. I gotta prevent some more siphoning and then yep, Gila hands. Three credit. It's so good to score that agenda early. I think sometimes I should just uh I should just put more of them in my deck. But it's so sort of annoying because it's one of those agendas where it's like you score one, okay. You score another one, well, the other one is just becomes a blank card. Whereas other agendas actually have abilities, uh, where scoring more of the same agenda gives you the more ability. Um, yeah. All right. So Mr. Lee has joined the Katie Jones Club uh, of friends. So he's got the draw power and the money power. All right. We're starting to see an iced remote. One is never enough against a criminal. Especially with Mr. Lee, how many inside jobs? Right, he's got to have inside job by now. You cannot put any agenda behind the single ice. Um, and with all that money on Katie Jones, he can definitely trash Sand Sands. Um, you might need like a Sand Sand Bernice at this point to put back there. Get plenty of money though. There is a toll booth with that kind of money.
compromised employee. Very interesting. That should, I mean, a lot of ice has already been rezzed, so I don't know how handy that will come in. Um, but the one credit for dealing with traces uh, will definitely be useful. Okay, so we're seeing another install three credit. It's hard to avoid that install three credit move um, when you have the Gilahan scored, right? It's like, if you can take three, why wouldn't you? <laughs> but in order to do that, you have to spend two clicks, meaning on your turn you only do one thing, which usually means using a card. So install take three is going to happen a lot. That tends to happen to me if I have that agenda scored as well. Hey, he runs that remote. There's an ice wall. Is he going to inside job it? You know he's probably got it, right? He's got to have it. Oh, he's got a corroder. Even worse. So it's not just getting in once. He's getting in every time. Yep, he's going for it. It's a sand sand. Trashing that. Pretty sure he can afford it. He's been, he just emptied a Katie Jones. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Wow, this early in the game, already two Sand Sands up, two Sand Sands down, only one agenda scored off of them. He's got Corroder and Mimic, which takes care of every ice on the table except for that R&D. So. Oh, Desperado went in the trash. He must have another one in the hand, ready to go. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Man, the game gets gets pretty straightforward here. When, uh, you know, maybe that's why these uh, these decks are so popular is that they're just there's nothing. It's not any sort of unreliable fancy tricks, right? It's just straightforward. Run, 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 run. Score, score, score. All right, so he blocks up the archives. Uh, hopefully, with some sort of code gate that will uh, stop him from getting uh, data suckers, or at least a pop-up window so he can get money um, if the runner wants to go collect data suckers in the archives, because right now he's not collecting them on HQ or R&D. HQ has a mystery ice, um, and R&D is impenetrable <laughs> with its RSVP pop-up window. Oh yeah, there's an inside job, there's a Desperado, what else is in that hand? There's a Desperado coming out right now. Oh, you see he's using his giant D6 to track the runner's clicks. This is something that, you know, is, is hard to do, it's hard to, to keep up, for five, especially with five rounds of gaming, but to constantly pay full 100% attention to what your opponent is doing on their turn is very, very difficult. Um, at least I have trouble doing that, right? Because it's like... During their turn, I need. I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do on my turn, and if I have to pay attention to what they're doing on their turn, it's 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 hard. Um, you know, some of some of Netrunner tournaments, especially ones that go on for a long time, are this is an endurance factor, uh, mental stamina, endurance, whatever you want to call it. Um, so he's doing a pretty good job there with his giant fun D6. Uh, I guess making it fun to track the opponent's uh, actions can make it easier right to do because you just really want to play with your giant d6 okay he blocks the inside job with a caduceus well he can still get through all that but it's going to cost him you know some credits it's a sand sand and can he afford to trash it right now yep there it goes i think that cost the corp all his uh, the runner all his money he had exactly five credits left. I think he calculated that, that, you know, if that was a sand sand, um, you know, that uh, getting through, he would be able to trash it. And I think if he didn't have enough money to do so, he probably would have just broken the three credit subroutine on the Caduceus and let the run end. Maybe emptied Katie and then run again to trash uh, a possible Sansan. -san. He definitely can't let a face down card go back to the corpse turn because that could be an Astro script and then really bad news. Oh, there's another face down card. Was that actually the third Sansan? -san? Oh, it's a Jackson Howard. 
Sans Sans, all three Sans Sans came out so far in this game, and all three of them have been trashed. That is crazy town. Holy crap. <laughs> Anyone out there who's like, oh, it's too hard to trash Sans Sans, it's so expensive. This guy doesn't even have imp, man. He's just, he's paying the money. I mean, he had a Katie Jones early. He's using the Katie money to get it done. Uh, the Desperado showed up late. I guess he had a sure gamble in there. Um, I think the compromised employee paid off maybe twice. It's paid off twice so far. It's two credits, so it paid for itself. I think it's, it's that hasn't been profitable. Um, but you know, yeah, I think there's a dirty laundry very early. But yeah, he's managing to get rid of those uh, get rid of those sand sands. Another install. Look at this, pushing the pressure up. He just emptied Katie. He just trashed the sand sand. We're installing again. Right? Can you maintain? Right? Every single turn, he puts something in there. It's like, you got to run this turn. I just used all my resources to run last turn. How am I supposed to run this turn? Katie, you know, is empty. If I can't empty. Oh, he gets in. I think he let the Corp have the three credits on the Caduceus. Paid two to get in and still had enough. Right? That's how he had enough to trash Sansan San, because he basically only broke the end of the run of the Caduceus, saving a whole credit, letting the Corp have money. And look, the Corp is super rich. He's letting him have so much money. Um, but right now, I think the Corp doesn't need money. He needs cards to spend the money on. Right? If He, he can't <laughs> use a Sansan San if it gets trashed before the next turn. So That was the fourth Sansan San trashed. He Shuffled that bag of Jackson Howard, got it, installed it, it got trashed. Wow. Okay, he just scores a breaking news out of hand to get the point. Maybe his, you know, the fact that he's been installing all these sand sands tells you that his hand probably has some agendas in it. Um, but maybe the runner's worried about, you know, a code gate up front of that Caduceus before he hits HQ. Uh, there's the Yog. Okay, so on the turn, uh, you know, where the Corp just scored a breaking news and didn't install anything, the runner was not forced to run. Um, so he could sit around, you know. Oh, and with the Yog, he was able to run R&D because he used a data sucker to break RSVP, and then he flew through the pop-up window. Actually... If he wants to, he doesn't have to use a data sucker token plus Yog to break RSVP. He can let the RSVP happen. The Yog will take care of the pop-up window without spending credits, which is what the RSVP disallows. And he will still access from R&D. But if there is a card on R&D that is trashable, he would not be able to trash it with credits. So if you're only interested in scoring agendas, a Yog basically allows you to ignore RSVP pop-up window, right? So if that RSV Papa window was on a remote, then the runner would probably spend the data sucker every single time on the RSVP in case there was a sand sand to trash it. Uh, but on R&D, I mean, I guess he'll let him have the sand sand knowing he can trash it in the remote rather than trying to trash the sand sand R&D. And so right now, if he doesn't care about... You know, the uh, if only cares about scoring agendas, getting into R&D, even though there's three ice stacked up there because of Yog and the arrangement, only costs two credits and gives the corp one credit. So it's like, I take, I spend two, you get one, and I access R&D. And if there's something there that can be trashed uh, for, you know, more than zero credits, I can't trash it. But, you know, install sweeps... I guess the the runner there is is knowing what's coming, right? Um, from R and D, since he can uh, he's seeing the cards by running there. He's got a full suite one two three data sucker. He's got Katie Jones. He's got Desperado. He's pretty much got everything. None of the ice on the table are really going to keep him out at this point, but he is losing two to one. Um, Is he going to empty Katie and run the remote? Empty Katie. Is that enough to break in and trash a Sansan? Oh, he's going to siphon. Um, there is a Bastion there. 
She's going to data sucker the bastion down. Right? Break it for one. Credit with Corroder. He let him get the three credits on the Caduceus. And then siphoned. He really is just letting the Corp have all this money. Um, and preventing the Corp from having anything to spend it on. I guess he spent four on the Bastion, but it's like, whatever, as long as, you know. And now that he siphoned off ten credits, he's keeping the two tags, though. That's interesting. He emptied Katie. He siphoned. He's running the remote. Again, saving a credit. There goes another Sand Sand in the trash. Wow, not only did he Jackson him back in, he was lucky enough to draw him again, and they got trashed again. But yeah, it's like the corpse already has enough money to do anything. So why spend one credit breaking the subroutine on Caduceus? Just let him have the money. That's really clever. Unless he's got a card like midseason, right? Um, you don't care, right? But if the corp did have midseason, right, then he would install an agenda in the remote and not always install a sand sand. So in a way, you know, the fact that he's <laughs> playing a hedge fund, <laughs> you don't need to play the hedge fund. You already got a zillion dollars. Um, you know, by only installing sand sands in the remote, you are signaling, I don't have a mid-season, right? Uh, and by signaling that, you this, you don't have a way to really punish the um, the runner here with the money he's letting you get. I mean, if you were able to keep a sand sand for a whole turn, you could score off of it easily with all that money, but... Yeah, and I guess you can res big nasty ice, but it doesn't look like there are any big nasty ice. These are all things that can, all the ice on the table are things that can be taken care of by uh, the base Anarch fixed breaker suite and a corroder. And one data sucker that is, I think has six counters, six virus counters on it, that's a lot. If you spend a turn wiping the counters, it's not like you couldn't refill them, right? So it's almost futile. Um, hmm. I think another thing that is just the ice. I mean, I, you know, I know both these decks pretty well, right? The ice the NBN is drawing is not the ice he needs, right? He needs a Draco, right? A Draco would be huge because he can make that Draco some enormous strength, right? And if you get the strength of the Draco really high, uh, thanks to all this money, right, then he could definitely make things miserable for the runner on at least one server that has a Draco on it. Either cost him a ton of data suckers to break it or make it impossible to break. And then... Um, if he ever wanted to run that server, you'd have to fight the trace. And since he's been letting the corp uh, have so much money, um, you know, the the trace would not be uh, something he could win easily. But yeah, look, he's still floating those two tags from that siphon um, from the the last sand sand. Uh, the corp has long since trashed Mr. Lee and Katie Jones. Uh, the compromised employee has been allowed to live, I guess. You know, he's not too worried about that. But he's staying tagged. Um, the only thing about staying tagged is, I guess, you know, he can't install any more resources uh, that are good. Another siphon. I guess he's going to keep the tags from that one as well. You know, if the MBN clearly doesn't have any closed accounts. If he had a closed accounts, he could be like, closed accounts, install. Um, yeah. A Viper. So that's going to cost him... a single data sucker along with the Yog to break. Two credits for the Roto Turret. Oh, he's got two R&D interfaces. He's seen a lot of cards here. 
He still hasn't scored anything. Maybe all those agendas are hiding in HQ, and they've been there since, uh, <laughs> you know, since forever. Yeah, the Viper is pretty tricky on R&D there, right? He's either going to lose a click. Um, so it's basically... Oh, no, he doesn't need... He's gonna, right, so he can't lose a click because he's just going to use one Data Sucker and the Yog, and the Viper goes away. Then the Rotor Turret's two credits, and the RSVP pop-up window you can either ignore if you're willing to give up your trashing ability, or you can, um, you know use, again, another second data sucker token, uh, and then you will be able to trash a card that you access um, with your two R&D interfaces. You're seeing three cards in there. Install Gila hands. I guess he actually, you know, for all the money he's let him have, um, you know, yep, he runs, he let him have three on the Caduceus. There is another Jackson Howard. So let's see, he put three Sand Sands back in last time, and he put two in this time. Says so a total of five Sand Sands trashed, and only one agenda scored on the first one. Every other one has been trashed as soon as it hit the table. The very next turn, the runner ran it and trashed it. But at this point, with the three R&D interfaces, you know, um, And the easy access to R and D, it's like, well, you got to put your ice over there. You can't, you can't really shore up that remote. Up oh, as a score. Uh oh, took away his moon writing. Took away his moon writing. Not good. Not good. It begins. The runner has now taken the lead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're, you know. How many ice are usually in a deck like this? 18, 19, 20. So 10-ish pieces of ice left in the deck. He's got every single ice rezzed. Oh, he's just running HQ now looking for the agendas, right? If they're not in R&D. And he's letting him have the Caduceus money again, knowing, I guess, that there's, there's nothing they... Uh... Oh, there you go. Five points. There were agendas in there for sure. Letting yourself be tagged like that and, and letting your resources die, I guess, you know, Mr. Lee and Katie Jones outlive their usefulness. Um, and I think that was the, th we've seen three siphons in this game. Uh, and keeping the tags, it's like, well, that makes character assassination a rather pointless, you know, sort of a crappy agenda, right? It has a blank ability, almost. Um, and it's a f just four for two. Okay, something else comes into the remote. Closed accounts. There it is. Finally punished him for keeping all those tags. Okay, so closed accounts. If that's a Sansan, San, how can the... Oh, it's a Jackson Howard. Draw two. Well, if it was a Sansan, San, I don't think there was no way the runner could have gotten in and trashed it. He would, could have taken two and run to access it, but he could not have uh, trashed it. So... He's going to run R&D, which doesn't even cost him money. It costs him a data sucker. and Oh, it costs him two credits, I think. Um, but he gets one back from Desperado at the end of that, of course. Yeah, so he took two, run R&D. And draw a card. Okay. Where did he? Uh, what happened there? <laughs> hmm. Uh, is he thinking about getting rid of the RSVP? I mean, all those. I mean, that, co that costs four to install. I guess you have a lot of money, right? So it doesn't matter. And it's like all those last front two ice do the pop up when the RSVP is make him pay a data sucker if he wants to trash. Install advance advance well. That's looking like an ice wall, right? Um, and obviously advancing it because nothing is really keeping this guy out. But if you've got all this money, 
um, you know, hey, you can you can make it strong. Uh, and you got Jackson Howard now, so you can draw past the the R and D lock, right? And you closed his accounts, so you know he may not be able to uh, get and trash the Jackson Howard. And if he doesn't have three credits when he acts as Jackson Howard, no, you don't have to use it. You can just uh... all right. So here's the three strength ice wall. So he brings the strength down with Data Sucker, breaks it. Uses a data sucker with, um, uses two credits for the roto turret. Let's the, R, it looks like it let the RSV pop up window do its thing, so he can't trash anything. He got a credit from Desperado. So he's using one data sucker for the ice wall, one for the Kadush, one for the Viper, and two credits for the roto turret. That is, for a five ice deep stack, that is a cheap access. Two data sucker counters. So a net loss of one and three credits. <laughs> well, I guess there's three code gates there and a yog, and two of the code gates don't matter. Well, that Jackson Howard is still there, letting the corp dig. Advance the ice wall even more. There you go. Since his accounts were closed, right, uh, and the siphons are gone, he's having trouble making a profit. So it will not be easy uh, for him to get uh, to the ice wall. Oh, there he goes. Infiltration for two credits, followed by a sure gamble. Inside job over the big ice wall. Yep, two credits for the inside job is cheaper than breaking it with the corroder, uh, especially when you're tight on money like this. The Yog and a couple credits carries you the rest of the way. You see three cards. No dice. Oof, yeah. Usually I'm not a big fan of using Inside Job on, on a central for just a normal old access like that. But I guess he does have two R&D interfaces, so it's not a normal old access. You see in three brand new cards. That makes it worth it. And the ice that's really taxing you on that server is in the front. Man, if that ice wall was just in the back on that server, this would have been a whole different game. If it was like RSVP ice wall, right? Because the only way he has to break an ice wall um, is with Corroder, which can only be activated with credits. He'd have to use a data sucker in the RSVP every time, and he'd have to pay for the ice wall because he couldn't inside job over it. Uh, that would have made that R&D so much more taxing. Uh, there's a sand sand, which he easily affords, and a beal comes out. I guess he doesn't have an Astro script in his hand, which means there are two Astro ships still in the deck. <sighs> Score is four to five. It's a close one. And the sand sand is rezzed, and I don't know if the runner now has enough to trash it. Uh, but the Jackson Howard is gone because uh, and, uh, the Project Beal was installed in its place. He doesn't. He didn't use the Jackson Howard. He just got rid of it. Uh because there was nothing to get back. I would have gotten back, um, because that is the third Jackson in the game. There is no way to, um, uh, there's no way to get it back. I would have gotten back a closed accounts and some other uh, R&D diluting cards um, into the deck uh, again. Right? Uh, they're also... I don't know if there's any. I don't think there's any sand sands left in in the archives, but I would have gotten back at least the close accounts and some some uh, untrashables uh, just to dilute R and D. I mean, you lost the the drawing power of Jackson Howard, which you really wanted to keep um, to be able to dig out the agendas. Now that you're able to keep a sand sand rest. And you could really use another closed accounts because uh, that keeps... I guess, do you really need closed accounts, though, when your sand sand is already rezzed and isn't being trashed? Hmm. Oh, he's advancing the ice wall up. Okay. I guess it's still vulnerable to an inside job, though. And he installed on the sand sand, but didn't score it, which tells me that's a Bernice, which tells me there are no agendas left in his hand, which means they're all in the deck. So if, if knowing all the agendas are in the deck... Uh, I guess he doesn't care about being tagged from Bernice because he's already tagged up. Um, but I guess that draws him into a run, right? Uh, he has to he has to honor the fact that that could be a character assassination. 
So that's not the worst. Uh, but yeah, knowing that there's no agendas in my hand, and knowing he could inside job into R and D and C three, I would have I would have used that Jackson. And knowing how badly I wanted a closed accounts, because a closed accounts will basically shut the runner out for a turn. Um, up, up, up! Oh, breaking news. Which doesn't even matter. Oh, an inside job. Here it comes. An R&D, an inside job again. The second R&D inside job. So that's really the only way he can economically get through to R&D now. That's game. That's game. Oof. Oof, yeah. I think the things to take away from this game is, you know, even, even when your economy is shut down as the runner, you know, Katie Jones trashed, uh, Mr. Lee trashed, uh, you're only really getting credits from Desperado and taking them by hand. Um, you know, that, that Anarch Breaker Suite, even with just one data sucker, as long as the data sucker is full, can get through a big stack of ice, depending on, you know, the arrangement. Um, and if it's a criminal, right, your front ice is, I mean, it was meaningful. It kept him out. It kept him from running constantly, but it basically let him have inside job runs. And he wasn't forced to use an inside job earlier in the game because he got all the breakers very, very quickly. Um, so, you know, plus Mr. Lee, I bet he has extra copies. He probably has extra copies of the breakers. So he was able to draw them early. And then he uh, probably put the extra copies on the bottom with Mr. Lee. So, yeah, there you have it. Oof. But also, you know that you know there was a significant amount of luck uh, in that game, right? Even with the the dominating runner just getting in wherever he wanted, trashing five sand sands. I think the sixth one stayed resed. The first one scored one agenda. Two through five didn't score anything. The sixth one was there at the end of the game. Um, the corp was able to get to, to five points, right? And he could have easily gotten to seven, uh, with a different draw, right? There was the turn. He put the Bernice down. It's just, he just didn't have an agenda. He could have had one, right? If he had just drawn an agenda, one card earlier, uh, if he already had an Astro script in hand, cause the runner did not do a lot of HQ running for the accesses. He did a very, very little of that. And, um, you know, the, the corpse hand very well could have had a, a bunch of agendas in it. And if so, uh, he could have scored them uh, quite easily. Um, but yeah, you notice, you know, he did exactly what you have to do to, to stop that NBN roll, which is every single face down card, you must run it. And when you do run it and get in, you must be able to trash it if it is Sand Sand. Ian Lee, let him have all that Caduceus money and without a way... This is something I've noticed in a lot of Netrunner games is that I'll have, you, you know, I remember this the most when I would play because we built it. Well, this second game already started. Yeah, the first game was rather long, so they were in a hurry to get the second one going. Um, so it's Wayland versus Kit. This Kit is dangerous, yo. Um, green level, whatever, right? Is that when I would play uh, because we built it, I would use commercialization and I would be mega, mega rich. I would have a zillion dollars as Wayland. And. Um, you know, the only, you know, there was a way to punish the, the runner with, uh, that Wayland money, which was number one, you'd splash Cobra Troubleshooter and number two, you would see Source Scorch, right? That was the way you punished, uh, the runner with your pile of money. Um, but you know, if you don't have mid season seesaw or something, if the, and the guy's tagged, right. And you just didn't draw your closed accounts, you know, you didn't draw the punishment cards, um, Maybe a good idea for MBN is to replace um, one or two of those character assassinations, right? Because like if you need to kill a resource, you can bounce your breaking news, right? Maybe replace those character assassinations with my favorite card, private uh, private security force PSF, because then in a situation like in that game, right? where he's letting you have all that money, you don't need to, to use your Gila hands to get more money. He's letting you have it on your Caduceus um, when he ran through it. Um, you know, you just go pew, 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 spend your spare clicks shooting him, 
right? Messing him up. You might have hit one of those inside jobs with the PSF against the the tag me, uh, the tag me deck. Then what's he gonna do? <laughs> then what's he gonna do? Okay, so in this game, uh, the Wayland he tried to s sneak out his false lead there, just unadvanced. Maybe trying to make him think it was a snare and this was a um, a, uh, a scorching Wayland. It may, may well be, but and it, or maybe he was trying to mid-season him off that, but I guess he didn't. It's going to be hard against a guy with the Magnum Opus. Okay, it's Kit with the Magnum Opus, a Gordian Blade. He can get into anything once per turn, though, right? So there's a Bastion, and I guess he just doesn't have enough money right now for the Bastion. With the Gordian Blade, it would cost him three. Two to boost, one to break, but it did become a code gate. He's got a toolbox waiting in a personal workshop to come out. I think that's the, the best way to get a toolbox on the table. Uh, and he's got the Magnum Opus, so he just takes eight a couple times, and he ain't afraid of no sea source. But man, that card's advanced, and uh, he can't get it, so... Maybe the corpse is about to get some Atlas counters. Oh no, the corp the corpse spent his money raising the bastion. Um, so he's gonna score hostile takeover out of hand. Okay, bad pub. A credit comes uh, uh Credit comes off of the toolbox, while well, a counter comes off the toolbox. Now he can run the Bastion using the bad pub, and it was a posted bounty. Satting up the posted bounty, maybe for a scorch. But I guess he couldn't afford it after resing the Bastion. Right? I guess, well, I guess if you were trying to set up a... Uh, I guess, yeah, if he was trying to just set up the scorch, he didn't have... There's no way for him to see source uh, scorch. Right, so letting him score it, or mid-season scorch, letting him score it doesn't help. He didn't have the full catch twenty-two. He was just going for a, uh, you know, just a posted bounty kill on its own. Looks like a run in R and D with the code gate ability. It's a shadow. With a bad pub and a credit, he breaks the shadow because it's a code gate. Kit is so... Oh, it was an indexing. Ooh. Huh, this is interesting, though, because if that was an indexing, right, that Kit Gordian Blade ability only works once per turn. So if he gets Season Agenda there and puts it back on top and he wants to take it, he has to run R&D this turn... Uh, with no way to break the shadow. I don't think I'll have a problem beating the trace, but who will be giving the corp two credits? Oh, I guess he didn't see any agendas there, or if he did, he put them down low in order to get them um, next turn or in a future turn. But that depends on how much the court draws. If the court goes draw, draw, draw. Credit, credit, advance. Or is it credit, advance, advance? I think he made the shadow strength two. Yeah. I think he made it strength three with two advancements, uh, which costs the Gordian Blade one credit to boost. And then two to break the shadow. Modded R and D interface. Oh, I see. No, he knew he had an R and D interface, so that helps because now you know you can you know to even it gives you a little bit of leeway in terms of how many cards. Yeah, that was one he indexed, right? That was one he indexed there. He put it down low. A little bit lower, you know, not just the second card, but I think he made that the third card. Thinking, what's the corpse going to draw two? Okay. 
But then he installed an R&D interface and ran, right? He took six the previous turn, so he definitely could afford to install the R&D interface and run. And he would be able to get that on this on that turn, uh, you know, regardless of its position. Three nil. Man, Kit is like Kit with a Gordian blade and a Magnum Opus and a bad pub. It's basically every single server. The front ice is worthless. You know, any if the, the runner can pick any one server, and the front ice on that server is worthless. Once per turn. Once per turn, pick one server. Front ice on server gone. Garbage. Installing over something and advancing it. Once or twice. That was probably, I think that was a snare we saw it in his hand. Um, there's a bastion there. So in order for him to uh, get through, he's going to need something extra because only that first ice is going to be a code gate. Oh, test run a fem. Test run a fem. Put the fem token on the bastion. He's in. Gordian Blade will take care of that first ice with Kit's ability no matter what ice it is. Magnum Opus, bad pub money will make it happen. Uh, and then one more credit will hop over the Bastion. Man, if I was the Corp, I would have felt safe installing that, right? I was going to take two credits with his Magnum and then run, just in case. He's going to run. Is he going to res? No res. Uses a bad pub to get over it. It was an atlas. Yep, I would have done. The, I would have installed that atlas there for sure. I would have felt safe with a bastion and then any ice in front of it when Kit only has a Gordian blade. But test run fem right now. Two ice are worthless. One more click. One more click incoming. It is, oh, a scavenge. Oh, that fem is free. That fem is free. Um, does not pay for that fem. Wow, that is, oof, man, Corp is having a tough day here. Five nil. Um, I do want to point something out. People don't know about the rules of Netrunner because it doesn't matter. But in the official Netrunner rulebook, it says that the order of cards in the archives doesn't really matter. You can shuffle up the archives all you want. The order of the cards in the runner's heap cannot be changed. That is a rule in the game. There is currently no card for which this matters. So nobody pays attention to this rule. But it is a rule. And you notice the runner did something nice where when he test run the fem, he put his test run card under the fem. All right? Which is great. That is a great idea. You won't forget that it was test run. Ooh, more indexing. Ooh. Oh, and the fem is there now. So the... Uh, Oh, and he's bringing out the, oh man, yeah, if the toolbox, you know, didn't have too many counters left on it, you can actually bring it out for less than, for one or two, and then you immediately get the two recurring credits. So, <laughs> oof, and use a bad pub for that, yeah, well. Um, the fem will just take care of that shadow from now on. Oh, but isn't the shadow strength three? So with a fem, you would have to pay two to boost and two to break. It's still, it's, you know... And with the Gordian Blade, is one to boost, two to break. That's fine. Um, toolbox plus Bad Pub. I mean, he's basically not paying much to get in anywhere at this point. Um, indexed. If he sees even a two-pointer, the game is over, right? Oh, maybe he didn't see anything because he's drawing a card. Oof. Uh, nope, he's running R&D. Two to boost. Oh, one and a bad pub. Yeah, two to boost, two to break because of uh, fem. He's using the fem. It's not the first uh, first run of the turn. Hostile. Six. Six-oh. 
Right. So the order of the heap, um, like I was saying, the order of the heap should not be changed according to the rules in the rule book. It doesn't matter at all for any card that exists in the current card pool. But he used the test run as a nice indicator, remembering the fem was test run. Great idea. Fully support that idea. But he put the scavenge into the heap underneath the test run. The test run was played first. The test run should be underneath the scavenge. And I hope they never, ever, ever make a card where the order of the heap matters, and I hope they actually just erase that stupid rule. Um, but if they ever make a card such that the order of the runner's heap matters, which they could because they can always say that it was written in the rule book that the heap order cannot be changed, then you would have to be careful with a play like that, making sure that your, um, you know, the test run would be underneath the scavenge and so forth. Okay. He's dropping a snowball into a workshop. There's a naked Jackson. There's a card in a remote that's unadvanced. I don't think he's going to run a remote with an unadvanced card at this point, right? Um, he's already got so many agendas. Um, there's no reason to risk that really hitting a snare. R&D is wide, wide open. You got an R&D interface. You've played some indexings. I mean, Corp doesn't have a lot of options here. He's, he just cannot let him score at all. He can't, you know. He's got Jackson Howard. He can he can draw through an indexing or a or the R&D lock, but that could be quickly trashed, or he could force uh, get the runner to force him to use it just by running it. It has no protection whatsoever. He can't really protect R&D at all. Oh, okay, so he's trying to protect R&D now. Oh, it's not 6-0, it's 6-1, because of the hostile takeover that was scored early. The agenda was just on the far side of the table. I got it wrong. Anyone who's yelling at your YouTube, uh, you know, you can stop yelling now. All right, Jackson draws. What card is going to save you? Really? He does have a trick of light in hand, which is interesting. So I guess he could score, um, you know, like something for the points out of hand if it's only a three advance. But all right, he's replacing something. So this is the key. Mag the problem with the Magnum Opus, right, is that you have to spend so many clicks taking money, right, um, that you need to still run, right? So what Kit allows you to do is it allows you to make just like the fewest runs possible with the highest damage, you know, in between like the, ooh, there's an archer. But it's a code gate, and he's got a fem anyway, so. All right, bad pub. Three, four, five, six. Break, 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 because it's a code gate. And it's now six to zero. Then an ice wall. He's, he has to bring out the the snowball. There's no other way up. That's the only way through. Snowball comes out. Does he have memory for all this? Oh, yeah, he's got a toolbox. He's got memory. One, two, three, four, five out of six memory is used. He broke the ice wall. He's going to access HQ. Access in HQ. Man, when you're down that much, right? You're down. Trick of light. Mm, that's why he advanced that shadow. Dual purpose advance on the shadow there. When you're down 6-0, you give up a point. It's like, how are you? I guess the archer was a big drain on him, but... Man. How are you going to come back? It's like, you know... Oh, there we go. A false lead. Okay. Mm. Man, the runner could have easily gone in on that false lead there. Would have been game. But there's no reason to take any stupid risks at this point. Okay, so one for the ice wall, and then I guess four for the shadow, R&D interface. There it is, posted bounty. 
game over. Complete domination. Oof. Kit plus indexing. He's going to get in, and he's going to get in hard. Wow. That is rough. Okay. So the runners uh, won both games. One very, very, with great difficulty, <laughs> uh, trashing five Sans Sans. Uh, and the other one with great ease, thanks to taking full advantage of uh, Kit's identity ability that is ridic so ridiculously strong that they take away influence from her. <laughs> She's only 10 influence. All right, I am now going to go work on the game from round five.